Over the last several days, we've shown you ample evidence of Donald Trump's race problem. There were the birther claims, of course. There was the relationship with the blacks, as he called them. And there were these comments that were obviously racially tinged. I heard he was a terrible student. Terrible. He went to Occidental. I heard he was a terrible student. Not like, okay, I heard he was a bad student. How does a bad student then go to Columbia and then go to Harvard? You look at what's happening with gasoline prices, where he said he has no control over prices, which he does if he gets on the phone or gets off his uh, basketball court. Look, I want to take time out here to talk to you guys about why I care so much about those academic comments. Do you get why I'm so concerned? It's because here's a guy who did everything he could. He got into Harvard Law School. He it graduated magna cum laude. He was the head of the Harvard Law Review. That's the top position. And it's still not good enough. They question his accomplishments, no matter how great they are, because he's black. They never questioned any. George Bush went to Harvard and Yale, and they didn't question that? Are you kidding me? I mean, come on. That's. I think a lot of African Americans in this country, we're going to talk to Jesse Jackson about it in a second, get so frustrated. What do we have to do to prove that we earned it? That's why it's frustrating. But it's not just Trump. It's an issue that's popping up all over the country for Republicans. Trump's birther campaign just showed how widespread the sentiment is within the GOP. Look at this. In the last year, 13 state legislatures have considered a variety of different birther measures. That's Republicans all across the country actually trying to pass legislation based on this nonsense. Now think back to all those non-denials and coded messages that Republican leaders sent throughout the birther movement. I'll take him at his word. I'll take him at his word. I take the president at his word. He's going to great lengths to make sure that it isn't shown, and, and that's kind of um, perplexing. Somebody who brings that up just engaging in crazy talk. Well, David, I, I don't think it's it's nice to call anyone right. crazy. Is it okay? It's not my job to tell the American people what to think. At least those big name Republicans actually speak in code. It's obvious what they're hinting at. They say, well, I don't know, I guess. I mean, I take him at his word that he was born here, although I'm not saying he is. But that's code. Just about every day now, we're getting new reports of Republican state lawmakers who are not nearly as subtle. The latest is Oklahoma Republican Sally Kern, who had this to say about African Americans. I taught school for 20 years, and I saw a lot of, a lot of uh, people of color who didn't want to work as hard. They wanted, wanted it given to them. Matter of fact, I had one student that said, I don't need to study. You know why? The government's going to take care of me. The NAACP is calling on Kern to resign, but Kern says she simply misspoke. How's that misspeaking? Oh, I meant tomato when I said tomato. No, you said they were lazy. What, what, what did you mean? Of course, the Republican leadership in Oklahoma is refusing to reprimand her. Meantime, Missouri Republican Steve Tilley was asked about a plan to prevent flooding in Cairo, Illinois, a heavily African-American town. Would you rather have Missouri farmland flooded or Cairo um, underwater? Cairo. <laughs> I've been there. Cairo. Um, if the governor vetoes the employment. Have you been to Cairo? Yes. Okay, you know what I'm saying then. Yeah, the problem is I know exactly what you're saying. While we're at it, let's not forget about Mississippi Governor Haley Barber, who until this week was considered a potentially viable Republican presidential nominee. Haley Barber, that's a guy who last year had to backtrack after sticking up for a white supremacist group, the White Citizens Council. Now, that was prevalent in, in his youth in Mississippi. He also backtracked after initially refusing to condemn a license plate that honored one of the founders of the Ku Klux Klan. So does the GOP have a race problem that goes beyond Donald Trump? In the immortal words of Sarah Palin, you betcha. With me now is the Reverend Jesse Jackson, president of the Rainbow Push Coalition. Reverend Jackson has condemned Donald Trump for using language that plays on racial fears. Reverend Jackson, great to have you here tonight. Yeah, let me, this is a very uh, despairing conversation. Mayors, Americans are focused on health security, need for jobs, educational access, and we're back down in this gutter again 
polarizing people based upon these unfounded fears. And really, what's called the Bertha Movement, Jenk should be called the illegitimacy movement. The president's illegitimate. He's a, he's a, he's a liar. We, we hope he, he fails. He's, he's not a Christian. He's not an American. He's not one of us. This is a, a disgusting state of affairs. We had Bartune Thurston uh, earlier in the week on this program. He's a very popular African-American blogger, and he said it harkened back to the old days when African-Americans would be asked for their papers before they voted, et cetera, et cetera. And here's a guy who's the president of the United States, and they're still asking for his papers. Uh, do you think that the that, that, uh, rest of America gets how insulting that is to African-Americans? Well, I don't, I don't know, but you know, the attempt by the state writers is to make the entire social justice movement illegitimate. In other words, voting rights is not enough. You must now have the voter ID. For seniors who do not have the, the who own fixed income, that to buy a voter ID amounts to a poll tax. So students can't vote on campuses unless they have a voter ID. Uh, women's right to self-determination, equal employment opportunity, uh, affirmative action, there's a whole body of healing legislation now on the attack as being called illegitimate. Legitimate. So this really is an, an illegitimacy movement. Now, as we showed, it's not just Trump. You've got Kern in Oklahoma. You've got Tilly there uh, in the clip that we showed. You've got Barber. Actually, let me show you one other, because people might not remember. You know, of course, you and I remember George Allen and what he said when he was running for senator. Let's, let's watch that. This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is, he's with my opponent. He's following us around everywhere. So is this a Republican problem overall, uh, Reverend Jackson? No, I think it's cultural. I mean, no one party has a monopoly on racial fears and racial uh, appeals, but I do know that we must come out of that gutter uh, and learn to live together. We must come out of that gutter and focus on what really ails America's need job. What that tornado teaches us as it comes to Georgia and, and Tennessee and Alabama, when the, the violence hits us, uh, lion and lamb, black and white lie together. It should be one of the messages in the tornado that we must in fact learn to however difficult to live together and not go down to that level again ever. I thought when President Barack was elected, it was a, a midday in American history, a great midday. But now the darkness is encroaching upon the light. And you know, look, I, I think I'm tougher on that than you are because we know what happened. The Republicans chose the Southern strategy. What was the Southern strategy? Let's try to get the white vote by, you know, uh, by picking on the African Americans. Well, they, and it when Pat well, Buchanan said on this program, it worked went for 40 years. Mrs. He doesn't admit it entirely, of course, what the strategy was, but it's obvious. So, and now why should we be surprised that most of the races, of course not all the races, have gathered in the Republican Party. They chose that strategy. Well, they went to Philadelphia, Mississippi, where Swerna Goodman Train had been killed uh, with the speech, uh, We Are Back. That was clearly a, an appeal toward the, the black Jewish social justice forces of, of the 60s. But now, uh, labor is on the attack. Uh, the social justice programs, equal employment opportunity is on the attack. Access to voting is on the attack. The state's rights agenda is now in full blossom, trying to undermine 50 years of social progress in our country. An American president, President Obama, does not deserve this kind of not so subtle quoted attacks on his person. He is a liar, he is illegitimate, he is illegal, he's not a Christian. We've never quite attacked a president this way before, ever. Right, and attacking his policies is totally acceptable, obviously. I do it all the time. <laughs> but attacking his personhood is a whole different ball game, and it's ugly. Reverend Jesse Jackson of the Rainbow Push Coalition, thank you for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, sir.